What's shaking, everybody? Welcome to another edition of the Orange Bloods Texas Football YouTube channel. I'm Jeff Ketchum, joined today by Anwar Richardson. We're talking a little breaking news. Thank goodness we, we don't have to squeeze the turnip a little bit more to get some Texas football discussion out of the way because there's a report out this afternoon that the college football playoff as, as soon as the 2023 season will expand to a 12 team format, according to a report, I'm, I'm not sure who broke this story. Quite frankly, I was at the Houston lunch bunch on war and I missed it when it came down. So then I get home and I jump on Slack and I'm catching up with everybody, but mm -hmm. I'm looking uh, at Heather Dennis's report over at ESPN right now, where she says the committee is going to meet next week. The, the idea is expansion to 12 and, you know, some of the specifics of it, which you and I were just talking about a second ago in this scenario where a 12 team format takes hold top four, get to buy five through 12 play a first round slash play in style weekend of games. And then the next weekend, there's a final eight and four finals begin and you would have, the four, bowl, the four conference champions and the four winners from these play in games play in what would be bowl game, starting in the quarterfinals, going all the way through to the final. Correct? Yeah, that you pretty much, you know, you pretty much have have nailed it. Your first thought on this? Well, if you're a Texas fan, so you're saying there's a chance, right? So th there's that portion of it. Because I, I, I'll go from the Texas portion, I'll go to an overall portion, right? It's interesting because we just did a video, what was it, last week, Catch, uh, when people were asking about, like, CFP and what the odds were. And, you, you know, you were like, I don't want to hear it. And, you know, you, you and I kind of in the same, like, all right, like, top four teams in the country, like, you, you're doing a little bit too much there. Like, that, that's asking a lot. The conversation changes a little bit, though, Catch, if we're now talking about 12, right? Now, now all of a sudden, you're saying, okay, basically, get, 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 it, get to the Big 12 championship game, and you've got a chance to get one of these at-large bids and then see what, what can happen. Anything could happen. So from that perspective, there's a Texas perspective. The second one, Catch, which is just the overall, thank God. Like, thank God that they're going to, they're at least thinking about this. This is going to proposal. They're, they're still going to be, you know, more of a vote. So there's a little bit more time to go. But thank God. I mean, I, we, you, we've all have felt like for the longest time that they haven't done it the right way when it comes to the, the college football and the playoffs. First of all, they didn't want to do playoffs at all. Okay. And so that was always a problem. And then eventually they did it and it was four teams and then we always had every year, what team got left out? This team got left out. That team got left out. And, you know, and now we're at a point catch where it seems Alabama's an instant every year. Ohio State is probably going to make it in every year. Clemson is going to make it in every year. And now we're, we're just fighting for like one other team. I like that you're going to have the opportunity to expand it. I like that you might have the chance to see a UCF in the playoffs, right, and see what a, a program like that can do or if there's a Boise State that's hot that year. You know, I like the opportunity to see some other programs just get in the mix and just see what happens. So I'm all for it. I, I think it's, it's about time. Uh, and clearly the NCAA has figured let's, – let's, 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 let's just call it what it is. They figured out how to make money off of it because they ain't doing it without money. So they figured out, okay, if we do this – how then can we make enough money or more money than the bowl games we're making? Because they were holding on to those damn bowl games for Precious Life because that was an instant check, instant check. And now they figured out, oh, snap, we probably can make more money with the playoffs. And now they're going to say, we're doing it for the kids. We're doing it for the teams. We're doing it for the fans. Now nah, you did it for the money. And, you know, but thank God it's, it, it both kind of coincide and align for us. I think you make a lot of great points. I hit you with a Monday overreaction type opinion that I'm going to give you on Thursday. Okay. I think this saves college football. I think this is a landmark moment in the history of the sport. And you've touched on a lot of it, but this has become a three-team sport, really. I mean, it's been Alabama, Clemson, and Ohio State. There's always – it's turned into a who's the second team in the SEC that – 
might be able to get a second bid. And, and then you have the entire rest of the country at best trying to beat the second best SEC team and then the rest of the pack. It has turned this sport unintentionally. I, they couldn't have foreseen that it would quite happen this way when they did it. I think they would have thought there would be enough parity that it wouldn't be a problem. Mm -hmm. But it has. It's been the opposite. It has become the Clemson, Alabama, Ohio State show. Someone else tags along for the dance. Maybe Oklahoma every other year gets a chance to get up. You know what I mean? But yeah. there have been so few teams that have been in the party. This really changes the dynamics of the entire sport because – Getting into the top 12 as a college football team, that, that's not that hard to do. I mean, really and truly, now if you're Texas, if you're Texas going in, now you don't have to worry about beating Oklahoma to get in there. Really? Yeah, yeah. You don't have to win the conference. You don't have to climb Oklahoma. You can bypass that. And – they're going to eventually will this thing will be big enough that by the time we get 10 years into it, there will be programs who are known as good tournament teams mm, mm -hmm, that, mm -hmm. well, they never win the conference championship, but they get into the playoffs and they have played in X amount of national championship games or whatever. We will, we'll start to hear coaches talked about as that's a guy that can get you to the playoffs. Yeah. That's not something that you can do right now. There's like three guys that can get you into the playoff. So the entire sport changes. I think this is huge for Texas because to the questions that center around, can Steve Sarkeesian get the team into the playoffs in the first three years? I hate that question. But if the question is by the end of year three, will he have Texas in a position where they can be in the top 12 and getting in. And I got to believe that's all that matters. Really and truly. Yeah. I mean, Here's the thing, Catch. Does, doesn't this become, in many ways, a recruiting neutralizer slash yeah. equalizer? Because every, Alabama tells you, we're going to be playing for the national title every year. Ohio State tells you, going to play for the national title every year. Clemson can tell you, going to play for the national title every year. And, 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 the, and the elite guys are just going to those programs. Yes. Go, the, but most of the, and now all of a sudden, you can now sit and say, you know what? We've gone to the college football playoffs two years, three yep. years, four years. We won a couple of games, so on and so forth. Now, listen, Bama may win, and, and, but we don't know what's going to happen if they got to play three, four games. I mean, we don't, I don't want to know, but from a recruiting perspective, Catch, I think this is huge. You tell me this is your baby, so I'm going to step back and listen, but – it seems like this is a, a small neutralizer uh, or at least an aid for programs trying to recruit against the big dogs. It's a massive change, I think, for Texas. Because I think that, and look, it may not be the type of thing that registers immediately. I don't know that this is a 2022 thing, but who knows, maybe – you know, 2023 is the next recruiting class and those kids will be freshmen when this would be their freshman year. So the impact of this, I think, does start to, to change. It really changes everything, I think. Look, I think for teams in the SEC, this is good for them because now they don't have to beat Bama to get their foot in the door to the biggest stage. So suddenly... If you're the number two team in the SEC, you're definitely in every year. And it'll be interesting to see how long – are we going to enter a world where in the first year six of the top 12 teams are SEC teams? I mean, we, we live in a world currently where the preseason top 10 will look like that. Mm -hmm. You know, it'll be a whole lot of Alabama – Georgia, AM, Florida, those four are all guaranteed to be in the top 10 this year without me even wondering, does LSU have enough clout to get in there? So if you're if you're the SEC, other than Alabama, I think every team this is a this hurts Alabama. It does. But I think it helps the rest of the SEC because if you're that conference, 
you got to believe you're getting four in every year. Right? I mean, yeah, potentially four at large. I mean, at least three. Yeah. At yeah. least three. I mean, last year, you would have had AM makes the playoff last year. Yeah. And they didn't come close to sniffing it, really and truly. So if you're the SEC, suddenly you're talking about three or four of our best teams can get in. That has a certain amount of value for all of the teams. It allows them to get participation ribbons when they never get to be participations. <laughs> yeah. They, 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 everyone is talking about their bowl wins. And, yeah. you know, won, won the Fiesta Bowl, you know, won the Orange Bowl. Like, everyone's talking about their consolation prizes. And you're just like, no, no, no. Like, this is the real prize. And, and to your point, Catch, about it helping Texas, Catch, in helping Sarkeesian, I, I, you t- I, I, I believe – if Texas can finish a season at 10 and two, they're probably in every time. It, it, right. <laughs> just, just every time, just every time, just go 10 and two in Texas because of the brand and because of what they are, if they could get to that relevant stage and be talked about, you're looking at a team that gets in and that, I mean, that helps. I think this does a couple of things. I mentioned, I think this saves college football. It really saves the regular season. Because if you're Texas, you can lose to Maryland, and it really doesn't matter. Not right away, because you, in your mind, if you're one of these big boy problems, you know you someone's getting in at nine and three. They just are. Mm-hmm. You're letting twelve in. You're getting six teams that are eleven and one and better, or something like that. You you might get a couple of mid majors. This is there's enough room that South Florida can go 11 and one or 12 and zero, and like there's enough room that they can get a, a spot at the dance. But if you are a big, if you're LSU and you go nine and three, it feels like there's probably a 50 50 chance that you make a top 12, especially yeah. if your schedule's really difficult. But I think outside of the SEC, this is this is the best piece of news for Texas football in a decade. This yeah. is this would be this is better for Texas than Texas getting a five star anything short of a quarterback because this makes what they have to do to be nationally relevant again much easier much easier and honestly it may be the thing that saves Sarkeesian's job I know that's a hell of a thing to say about a guy who's never coached a game yet. Mm-hmm. But this is a this is a football world that doesn't give college coaches at Texas a lot of time to figure it out. Correct. They get judged very early, so much so that we get questions like, can Sark get Texas into the playoff by year three? And it's like, you're asking me if I think he can be a top four team in the country. That's a big ask. Yeah. If these rules were in place this year, you can talk me into Texas being good enough to be in the playoff discussion in November, right? Like, I mean, all we're talking about is getting to the top 12. Texas, if Texas beats Iowa State last year and they don't lose that game and they run the table post Oklahoma, Texas gets in. Yeah. Texas gets in. And so it, it changes everything. Look, Texas, there's a world where Texas could go 10 and two, not play in the Big 12 championship game because they lose to Iowa State and, and Oklahoma. And they, if they don't get in, they were on the bubble. They were on the bubble and the last game of the season mattered and politics and talking up schedule strength and all of these things It matters for a school like Texas and programs like Texas. This helps Michigan. This helps every, this helps USC. This helps the entire scope of college football, not named Alabama. The the only three losers in this are Alabama, Ohio state and Clemson. Yeah. Cause they've monopolized the sport to the, to the point where it was really impacting recruiting, where how do you, if you're Texas in a head-to-head battle, 
justify being chosen over Clemson. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This, this evens the playing field significantly. It changes the entire sport. This is the best thing to happen to Texas football in a decade. Seriously. So this would be one of the last things I say on the catch. I, I pulled up and I got in front of me the, I got the final standings from the top 25. So I was trying to find like the, the final weeks uh, of it, but it was just, I got the final standing. So, you know, so in the final standings, it was, you know, Alabama, Ohio State, Clemson, and Texas A&M, right? But here were the other teams that go through five through 12. Notre Dame, Oklahoma, Georgia, Cincinnati, Iowa State, that's at number nine. Northwestern at number 10, BYU at number 11, Indiana finished at number 12. So again, I would have to see what that, what they look like in the final week going into the bowl season, but I'm sure it didn't fluctuate too much, right? I'm sure that's kind of the core with a few additions and subtractions, but you talk about who that helps. How does that help a program like Indiana? I mean, who could be knocking on the door and how, you talk about a recruiting boost in, in a place like that, where you're like, Man, you just you got hot, and, and, and now all of a sudden, you as Indiana get to go into a kid's you know living room and go into different states. You might be able to come into a Texas or a Florida, and you know, and be and be able to tell a kid, hey, if you want to compete for a national title, hey, we were there, we, we pulled off a win, and get some of these other schools, and you know, Florida was on the on the brink, Northwestern, Iowa State, you know, programs like that, Cincinnati. You know, there's a lot of other, you know, programs that we don't consider elite and premier, and, and, but they are really good. They're really good if you really <laughs> we think of them as basketball schools. I mean, maybe I won't say elite and premier. Let's say they're not um, have major, major name brands as far as football is concerned. To be able to do something like that is, is huge. So the last thing I'll say is for Texas, for Sarkeesian, I think this, what this does for you is it gives you hope. It gives you optimism. You know, we just we just did a video catch about Arch Manning, right? And what the potential, what it would take for him to come here. Now a guy like Arch doesn't look at it and say, the only way for me to compete at a high level and compete for a national title is for me to go to one of three schools. Yep. Now he can say, you know what? I've got a few more options here. And now all out. So you're telling me all I got to do is get in the, in the tournament and then get hot? Oh, I can do that. It all of a sudden, it changes a little bit. Yeah. Where guys get drafted will always make an impact, right? And Alabama will have the advantage because guys are getting drafted. But once more people say, I got options, not maybe not every five-star goes there, right? Maybe some people say, you know what? I think I can make it happen here. So uh, if you're a Texas fan, look, I still say, still got to win the Big 12 and all these things. But at this point, now that I don't, I don't know if I can even say that anymore. Now I've just got to say, finish with 10 wins and you, you've got a shot. Yeah, there's a good chance that the top two teams in the Big 12 every year are playing in the play. Iowa State makes it last year. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, it, it's, I think the one thing that we haven't mentioned that warrants mentioning is the bowl season as we know it is now forever dead. Yeah. Because the teams that don't make the top 12, that'll be like not making the NCAA tournament. And when only four teams are involved in the playoff, you can sell that the bowls mm. still kind of matter, and you can still talk players into wanting to play those games. But now, if you're an SEC team and you don't make it in the top 12, it's real hard to go to the Liberty Bowl. You know, if you are Texas, it's real hard to go to the Alamo Bowl. If you finish 14th in the country, that's the NIT. Yeah, yeah. It's – and, and, be, and this is now four weekends of football. You've got first round, quarterfinals, semifinals, and championship. That's four weeks of football, four weekends of football, where if there's a playoff game going on of any magnitude and Baylor's playing Air Force in the Auto Zone Bowl, <laughs> right? Like, Unless you're a gambler. Yes. Unless you're a gambler. That's not what you're 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 watching, but you're not as a fan. So the bowl system is, I, and I saw in the story that as many as ten bowls could become obsolete, defunct, whatever the word is, pending this announcement. 
I mean, I think I think the bowl, they're going to try to maintain the bowl system, but it I eventually very quickly it will be seen as the NIT, and I think I, I think you will probably have coaches that will say, yeah, we'll play in a bowl game because they'll want to not be sitting on the sidelines. But you'll if you think it's been if you think guys have opted out, mm-hmm. if you think that and this I think helps. That's the sport. Exactly what I was going to say. Against opt outs. If, yes. If a kid at Indiana has a chance to play in the playoff, but he knows he's going to be a first round draft pick, he probably won't play a couple more games and see it out. Consequently, if you don't make, if you're not in the top 12 and you think sure. you're an NFL prospect, I mean, you just need to know <laughs> you're not putting your body on the line for the NIT. So, Correct. The rest of the sport, I think, changes positively. But the bowl system is dead, and I think this thing gets to 16 by the end of the decade. Easily. Once you've gone from 4 to 12, the most even number possible is 16 so that everybody has to play the same number of games and the top four seeds at that point can have a home playoff game in a way that they wouldn't be able to have now. There's a we had, we had this conversation even before we came on. Like, you know, on one hand, you get to host a home playoff game, and how badass would that be? Seriously, think about every game that you've covered at the University of Texas at home. And now imagine a home playoff game. I mean, you see it in the NFL. I mean, yes. it, it, it makes a huge difference. I mean, you've seen it in all sports, right? But, I mean, when you think of, like, an NFL home playoff game, like, it matters, right, to be the wild card team that has to go on the road. So, you know, the, the top four don't, don't have that luxury, per se. It makes late-night games on the West Coast interesting. It makes the entire college football – now that you're watching 12, you have to have eyes everywhere at all times. If a team starts off 4-0 – we got to pay attention to them because they don't have to go perfect. Isn't that the thing that South Florida has to do, right? Yes. Like they're five and zero, oh, and suddenly they're ranked fifteenth in the country, and they slowly climb their way up. But God forbid they have one weekend where something crazy happens and the dream dies. This makes all the se- the whole regular season becomes as interesting as the NFL season. For the same reasons, every game counts. And you can't say that when only four teams make the playoffs because if you're some schools, you lose your first game, it doesn't count the same way. But the trade-off is the bowl system is dead. It will be dead, dead, I think, by the end of the decade. And we will eventually get to a point where the new barometer for your coach either keeping his job or losing it is being able to get his team 12th or higher, that's the new benchmark. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. any season short of that is going to be viewed as a failure, and coaches aren't ready for that. Think about Tom Herman last year and how he refused to let the word failure be a word that framed his team. But just like in college basketball – you can win the NIT and nobody gives a damn. Shaka won the NIT and everybody was like, I'd take one win in the NCAA tournament versus all five wins or whatever it takes to win the NIT. So for coaches like Steve Sarkeesian and really like Jimbo Fisher, everybody, if you aren't year in and year out consistently getting your team into the top 12, you will not keep your job. To me, it is now a defining marker for how coaches are going to be judged. And there have been coaches, there are coaches in the SEC. Kirby Smart's a perfect example. He's like in the top six, seven every year, but he can't get over that last hump. And he's kind of viewed as a weird failure. But now a guy like Matt Brown at Texas in his heyday do you know how many playoffs Texas would have played at played in in the 2000s? They would have been in the 2001 playoff, the 2002 playoff, the 2004 playoff, the 2005 playoff. 
arguably the 2006 playoff, the 2008 playoff, the 2009 playoff. They probably play in seven or eight out of 10 playoffs under these new rules a generation ago. Texas has had no teams this decade that would qualify. But in the old days, now you're no longer judged as a failure for 10 and two. 10 and two gets you in. And I guarantee you within the first five years of the playoff, we will have a team from outside the top four teams win the playoff. And when that happens, that will be the moment where everybody's like, it's a brand new age. It can be done. It's no longer just a theory. And suddenly it's like, all you got to do is get in. You get in, you win four games. And it's kind of equal for everybody. Other than the top four teams only have to win three. And trust me, that'll be a problem soon enough. It will be. But 12 now, there's no turning back. I think it's the best piece of news in college football that I've ever heard of. I think, it's, it. I think it saves the sport. Well, we'll talk more about it. My, my final, final, final thing will be from, from a Texas perspective, because what I, I absolutely do agree with you, it definitely makes it more interesting. I think, you know, again, we joked on a previous uh, video about never really having to watch uh, the CFP uh, release on Sundays, because you're like, it didn't matter. You know, Texas has got a, a loss or two it doesn't even matter, you know, but now all of a sudden people start paying attention. Games in November will mean something and it won't just be one or two teams. It will be a lot of teams. It okay. would be real quick. Cause this is the million dollar question. I wouldn't interrupt you without it. If Herman gets that team into the playoff at the end of the season. <laughs> if they beat Iowa state, they're in. Yeah. If they beat Iowa state. They end up being in the Big 12 championship team game. They went off like six in a row. If Herman gets Texas into the playoff, he keeps his job. Period. Probably. Period. Probably. They wouldn't have been in the playoff in 10 years. He finally gets them into the playoff. That's how monumental this thing is, is it is now going – to reward mediocrity just enough that guys that aren't great are going to be able to exist in this world with a little less pressure on themselves. Kirby Smart suddenly is a guy who has his team in the playoff every year instead of a guy who narrowly misses the playoff every year. It is going to be the type of thing that changes the way narratives around the sport are formulated. And I'm fascinated to see what happens. It's a brave new world. And it is a world where Saban, Dabo, and whoever the Ohio State coach is at the time dominate. They may still dominate, but this to me shakes it up considerably. Seriously. Last thing on my Texas thought. The, the, the big thing for Texas is that we talked about a and being a much improved team. a and is probably potentially now a every year kind of playoff team. And that also means Oklahoma is still going to probably be an every year kind of playoff team. And then and now you start talking about the recruiting battles of, with the Alabamas, uh, Ohio States of the world, Clemson, people that come into the state of Texas and, and take out their top talent. So from a recruiting perspective, there becomes more on Texas that you you will have to take that next step because some of these other programs it won't you know the uh, you know it won't Oklahoma you may laugh if they go and play Alabama in the first round and lose or they play another one in the CFP but Alabama may not be top four but you you give them a couple of chances to play some some quarterfinals and semifinal games and you know it makes a little bit of difference so. I, but I'm excited. I mean, it's 2023. We'll see what happens. It, it, hopefully this whole proposal goes through. Uh, but that's my last moment on it. That's my last I moment. Have, I have to ask you one more question. Yes. Sark's first two years, this doesn't come into play. But in year three, it does. 
before he ever plays a game, right? So we can do this and it's somewhat fair. We're not moving goalposts. The expectation for Sark is that Texas is in the playoff in the top 12 at the end of year three. I think it's a bad, I think it better. If I guess what I'm saying is, and my question to you is in a world and look, it's if, if Texas gets there next year, Hey, gets out of get out of jail card. But if the first real opportunity is in 2023 and that's year three, if he isn't there, he's on the hot seat in 2024, right? Absolutely. Because, again, you got to think of the programs that more than likely probably made it. And then, you know, again, Texas fans will look in, 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 in alums and uh, boosters, money donors are going to look around and say, Aggies are in, really? Yeah. Oklahoma's in, really? God forbid there's a, you know, there's a second team from the Big 12 that's in. And, you know, it, so, yes, it will be definitely, you know, that's that's the worst case scenario. If, it, if we're in 2023 and they're not a top 12 team, it, then something is definitely going wrong. Because it's really hard to get fire someone for not making top four. But yes. everybody's going to want to be in the top 12. Everybody. And if you don't get in – it's going to be seen as a failure to the point where they're going to very quickly change the 16. Right. Watch. Cause guys are going to start losing their jobs. And like, if you're so, yeah, no, I, I can't wait. I wish it was starting this year. It would, it, it would immediately make the upcoming football season more fun. And my final thought is I, I, it, I don't know how it's not anything but more fun for college football when we get to 2023. It can't get here soon enough. Look, for myself and Anwar Richardson, thanks for watching the video. We didn't mention it earlier. Hit the like button. If we've entertained you at all, subscribe if you want to see more videos in the future. Until tomorrow, you guys take care of each other. We'll talk to you soon. Later.